So should I ask the same question again? What do you do? Yeah. That question again. Yeah. We have to do that question again. Oh, it's up to you. It's okay. You well, can, I'm going to I'm I'm You can rewrite it. Ready? Ready. I, I want to go back to ask again about ADT, American Dance Therapy Association, the ADTA. Um, my question was, how did the initial 20 members that, that you spoke about before actually gather together to form the organization? Well, one thing I remember, we visited is others' homes. Yes. I always like to have company, and I'm sure the others too. So I remember visiting with them, and obviously I hope they remember also having been in my house. Mm -hmm. How we actually got together, uh, somebody had a husband who was a lawyer, I think, mm -hmm. and they explained to us that we have to have all these things that belong to an association. Mm -hmm. So then we started to be one is a treasurer. I think I was a treasurer thanks to my business background. Mm -hmm. And uh, some had to be the president. I don't know who was our first president. Marion Chase was the first president, from what I understand. Uh -huh. yes. So did you know Marion Chase? Never. You didn't know her? I never met her, no. Uh -huh. No, you know, there's one thing that's very personal. Yes. I worked, I don't want to overdo it, but I think I worked 60 hours a day. Yeah. Because we still needed money. Yes. And uh, I did not only go from one school to the other, and then later, as you know, on top of it to Adelphi, yes. Saturday, and on, in the evening I taught uh, grown-up classes when I had this first, you know, for physical education teachers, mm -hmm. for adapted physical education. I mean, I didn't have the time to go to Washington, D.C. to yes. take classes with Marion Chase. Yes. And then I know she came to New York, yes. but again, I could not call classes off. Right. And if I had, God forbid, a free day, I think by that time I still had nobody to help clean with the house. Mm -hmm. And my father lived for many years with us, mm -hmm. and I had to nurse him. He was sick. So, I mean, I really, when I think of this time back, darling, I always wonder how did I do it. Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like you were faced with many of the same challenges that women <laughs> today are faced with, but without as many of the perks, meaning that um, you, you were a working mother, and you had many responsibilities at home, and you were working day and night, um, as well as having a young child. Well, it was, it was a hard time, but somehow, looking back, mm -hmm. I forget all the problems. Mm -hmm. And I think I had a wonderful time. <laughs> you know? Sounds like everything you've done, you've had a good time. <laughs> now, uh, when you spoke about those 20 people, it was obviously primarily the New York dance therapy yeah, that you had that's contact it. with. We were the New York. Yes. We had invitation for the West Coast mm -hmm. out. And I think the West Coast people later on came mm -hmm. and gave us workshops. Mm -hmm. They gave us workshops. Yes. But, but all in New York. So many of the dance therapists that you came in contact with um, I would imagine were people like Lillian Espinette. Yeah. Oh, we, Lily lived nearby. Yes. So we became personal friends. Yes. Tell we me didn't talk business. Can you talk about your relationship with Lillian? Well, Lillian found out that I was two years older than she. And she was excited. She said, finally, I know I'm not the oldest one. <laughs> and that helped us so much because we really had a personal relationship. And she had, this woman was different. She was different. Here she had a normal one-bedroom apartment, and she lived with another woman whom she loved dearly, who was older than she. How they lived in this one apartment for years. And of course, Lillian loved to travel. And later on, of course, she gave workshops and lectures. And she always brought things back mm -hmm. from India and from Egypt and wherever. And it was a small apartment. Mm -hmm. And two women lived there. <laughs> and Lillian wrote. You see, 
I never wrote a book. I wrote articles. But Lillian wrote a book. She wrote, I think, two books. So. Um, one major book. One, yeah. So anyway, how Lillian managed, I don't know. So when she came over to my house and it was summer and we could sit on the back porch with a little view of the garden, mm -hmm. she loved it. And we didn't talk business. Mm -hmm. We just enjoyed each other's company mm -hmm. because now Lillian don't hear it. Her philosophy and mine were really not the same. Uh -huh. How would you describe them? What, was the, what were the differences? You see, Lillian thought she has developed an absolutely proof, and she wrote it in her book, what the problems were, how they had to be treated, and so on. And that's probably why I never would dare to write a book. I won't say I have a definite scale for what I do, and I don't have a definite scale for their sickness mm -hmm. because according to my religion, I don't believe in sickness. Mm -hmm. So how can I create it, you know? And for that reason, I know if I would start to touch Lillian's convictions and philosophy, I would shrink. And she, it never occurred to her that somebody might have a different opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I know that well. She was also one of my teachers. <laughs> so, I mean, we had no problem. She was convinced I was convinced <laughs> of her <laughs> philosophy. And so we got along as friends, really as friends. And she had personally great disappointments. You know, she was a Norwegian, she was not Jewish, she had not suffered from any of these uh, happenings in Europe, and still she had left Europe because she was a free spirit. She was a beautiful human being. So we, we related on that basis. <laughs> One of the things that you have, that, that have you've said, um, or alluded to through the interview is your great spiritual connection. And I know that you're a Christian scientist. Yeah. And I know you don't um, believe in, as you said, in, in illness. It seems that it, it seems that the that your spiritual connection really has guided your work. You see, it not only guided, it gave me work. All my jobs, and this is the truth that I tell you now came more or less to me. Now, for instance, the Lexington School, I walked by, and I felt maybe that would be more, more purposeful in life than have another group of sweet little children from my neighborhood mm -hmm. for so and so many years, and then go. So I went in, and they grabbed me. Now, after that, I heard socially from this young teacher, from this young dancer who was not uh, enjoyable working with m emotionally disturbed. Besides of it, they were not only emotionally disturbed, this next school, they were street kids, mm -hmm. you know, the girls 15, 60 were actual prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And the boys, I don't know what else went with them. So, I mean, again, I just went because I thought maybe I should not just work now with the deaf, Maybe I go there, you know, and they grabbed me. And again, as I said, I was 17 years. No, I was, I was with a child, will, I was as long as it existed mm -hmm. when it closed. Now, after child, will, I got Lifeline. Now, Lifeline was interesting. Somebody had told me there is a little school in Jamaica. And I know they start out with children. Maybe you should go there. And I went there, and it was an old house. How that was ever allowed to be used as a school, I don't know. And the director said to me, what do you say you want to do? And I said, well, use the children 
to, for music and to dance and so on. You think you can do that? I said, yes, I, I do it, I do it. Oh, well, show me. Now, have you ever had this experience? You go to talk to somebody and she says, show me. So I said, well, how do you want me to show it? Well, she said, we call the children from the different classes and you do it with them. So I said, well, can you give me half an hour? And she said, yes. So I went quickly from one class to the other and asked them if they have a record player and if they have any kind of music that they use for the children. And they did. And after half an hour, they took me in a room. And in that room was a table and a chair and a couch mm -hmm. and something on the floor. And I know I worked there, I don't know, for mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. And after that, she, yeah, I've been, for instance, when I saw children, I put the chair and the table, mm -hmm. and I said, now oh, you climb first on the chair, and then you climb on the table, and then you jump down. Mm -hmm. The teachers looked at me if I'm insane. Well, these children lined up like angels, mm -hmm. because each one wanted to climb on the chair on the table and jump down. Mm -hmm. And then I put something they had, so, yeah, from the couch I took the pillows and put them on the floor. And I said, now when you come and have jumped down, you do something on this, on this. Uh, well, I, they were so active, mm -hmm. disciplined active. Mm -hmm. You see, that is of course something I want to touch on. Well, as, as you're describing this, the thing that, that touches me is how you totally believed that they were able to do this work. Well, I saw them, and, and you know, saw them, but you I saw them, they, believe, were, they were very emotional, yes. very vivid children, mm -hmm. you know. All they needed is discipline mm -hmm. and order, order. Mm -hmm. And so that I got, then I got another group of them, I remember, I sat them down for a moment to see how it was, and see, and then the little girls, I did something with, I don't recall, I only know they later on told me one of the older girls, the teenagers, had moved for the first time. Mm -hmm. She has moved for the first time, I don't know how she moved. <laughs> so, the, so I was engaged. And at that time, honey, I needed money, I needed money. So I said, yes, I would work here, and how much? And I said, $12 the hour. Honey, that was at a time where twelve all dollars the hour was exorbitant. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how I got to that amount. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I just it came out of me. Twelve dollars the hour. She looked at me and she said, Twelve dollars the hour. And I said, Yes. So she mean you mean you charge twelve dollars the hour? And I said, yes, she engaged me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for 10 years, she didn't raise my salary. <laughs> she gave you what you thought you had at that point, and that was it forever. <laughs> well, um, 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 Elizabeth, I, I'm wondering what you think about, or what your vision, I guess, um, would be for the field at this point. Where now do, you see, you I will shock you, I will shock you. I'm old fashioned. I was a dancer and we discovered that dance is what you call therapy. Now in your program that has now developed to a master's degree, I think they even dream of a doctor's degree, I don't know, they have already many of my colleagues and I admire them, honey, honestly admire them. They have doctor degrees, but they don't dance anymore. 